Hello. Networks used to be proprietary, based on the vendor's own standards and often sustained by industry dominance. Not anymore. Service providers and enterprise customers alike are starting to demand cloud-hosted services and products based on open standards. The result has been to put the process for developing industry standards on trial. Could it be more efficient? The main criticism of industry standards used to be the time it took to agree them, while the technology marched on regardless in the background. And fairness is another issue. Is the standards development process a level playing field? We'll be asking which are the most significant standards, where the barriers to standards development are, and at the future for proprietary standards. But first, why have open standards become so important today? Well, one of the biggest things that's been happening with companies is they need to move faster. So everybody's looking for that magical agility word. And in order to move fast, you've got to be able to create and innovate. The only way you can create and innovate is if you've got standards that you can work on. There's no need to go out and recreate the wheel. Everybody wants to leverage what's already out there. Which are the most significant open standards in the networking and telecom space, and why? Well, I think we're in a really interesting period now in networking. Uh, we refer to this period of uh, disaggregation, where we're disaggregating the, the basic elements of networking, hardware and software. Uh, our industry is based largely on standards. Uh, when you're talking about networking, you're fundamentally connecting different components together. You need a standard in order for that connection to happen. Right, so standards have been central to how any network of any size has been built out. Um, but we're seeing a significant shift in the way in which customers uh, acquire networks and, and the fundamental components, the hardware and the software. Um, so we're now disaggregating those hardware and software elements. Um, part of what we're seeing is an adherence of the standards, uh, certainly the, the standards that make up the hardware, but we're also seeing a significant uh, effort on open source and a different relationship to the software and the hardware components that make up the network. Uh, so some of the standards that we've all come to know and love, uh, like Ethernet, for example, will be a significant standard and basis for us moving forward. Uh, but increasingly, other technologies around controller capabilities, uh, for example, some of our efforts with uh, open daylight and open source and projects from that that will then become the future standards are critical when we look at this whole world of what we refer to as software-defined networking. So that's a good question. When we talk about open in this industry, um, there's usually a more commonly accepted definition of open, and that's got to do with interfaces. But there are two other dimensions uh, we should also think about, which is open source and open models. Now, within those three dimensions, we have a range of protocols. And just to give you an example, in the open interfaces, there is open config. Uh, uh, that's, that's one. There is also within the open source, um, the open daylight and ONOS. And in the open models, uh, we have yet another next generation or Yang. Uh, open flow is another one. So there's a whole gamut uh, of all these different uh, protocols, standards, and technologies. And the, uh, the, the, the more interesting question is why open? Uh, it's, it's got to do with, for open source, for example, leveraging the power of the community, the open source community, and one of Infineer's products, which uh, was introduced in August of 31st, the Exceed SDN controller, is based on open daylight. We leverage the work that's already happening in open daylight, and through that, we can work and keep um, developing even further. Uh, so yeah, so it's got to do with leveraging the entire community, and also, uh, through that, uh, achieve interoperability. What are the biggest barriers to the development of open standards? The biggest barriers, I think there's a, there's a couple things. One of the biggest ones is revenue and the lack of inertia. There's a lot of things going on in the networking world. There's a lot of people that have been doing this their whole lives this way and they don't want to change. And the revenue from a lot of vendors also drives them to want to protect share. So the disruption that's coming from open networking, the disruption that's coming from open source, is really coming from a lot of the smaller companies as the larger ones are trying to battle against that and you know, try, to, try to maintain the share that they've had. And if open standards are so good, which ones will succeed and which ones will fail? Well, I think the, uh, the standards that are positioned to capture what the value really is in, in the network, this isn't uh, 
And there are certainly opportunities to, to develop standards for the sake of standards. Um, sometimes those are motivated by um, you know, slowing down areas of innovation. Uh, it's the standards that are really designed to uh, embrace the community and embrace um, rapid innovation. Um, so I, I actually really think that it's a balance between both standards and open source. Um, oftentimes to incubate technologies, we rely on open source. A lot of community uh, involvement trying to figure out what ultimately will be the basis moving forward. It's that basis which is the standard. Uh, so I think um, it starts with an understanding of where the shift is in technology, where the new value is and gets extracted. That uh, first gets found through open source, but it's, it's that basis for the standards that we ultimately will be um, basing our businesses on. Yeah, so within those three uh, ways of looking at open, the open model, the open interfaces, um, and the uh, open source code, uh, we see within the open source there is a tremendous momentum behind open daylight. You know, we have 600 odd developers working on that. Um, so the huge momentum uh, behind the open daylight. For the open interfaces, NetConf, uh, the industry is coalescing around NetConf as the interface of choice. And also for the open models, yet another next generation or Yang, that's the model which the industry is coalescing around for packet and Infra is working to extend Yang for optical interfaces. Now by implication, what that means is that those interfaces which do not keep up with the innovation, which do not leverage the development which is happening uh, in this industry, will uh, not find much application and use uh, going forward. And finally, let's get the analyst's view of the future for proprietary systems. Well, proprietary systems, I think every large proprietary company will still be around 10 years from now. Nobody's going to go out of business, but what's going to have to happen is they're going to have to change the way they're doing things. And so I think you'll see consolidation in the market. You'll see the innovation come in in the smaller companies. But then as these larger companies realize they've got to get on board, you'll see them start to snap them up. There will be consolidation in the market. Ultimately, they'll drive in the same direction. We saw this very clearly with servers back in the early 2000s with VMware. Uh, I, I worked for server vendors and every single one of them said, oh, the, the virtualization is going to kill servers. And they ended up selling more servers because as it became easier and faster to deploy things, they started snapping up more hardware. 